Hello and welcome to the Narc Alert, the channel where we look at different YouTubers and celebrities and point out some traits that they seem to show that fall within the spectrum of Narcissistic Personality Disorder, or NPD. Please do not send any snark to our subjects. First of all, let me say very clearly once again, we are having a little messy fun. This is not a diagnosis. We're simply going to point out some traits that this YouTuber shows us that seem similar to traits that fall within NPD. So key points to remember, messy fun and not a diagnosis. Hello and happy Monday. I hope you had a great start to your week. In this video, we're going to go back in time just a little bit with Amber's Addressing All the Rumors video. In truth, most of the rumors were things like, you don't like hot sauce, or you give a lot. But there's a little snarkicism in there. So we have a lot of talking to do. I'm gonna try to get through these as fast as possible. So if you guys are watching this and you're just automatically gonna call me a liar, then move on. Lying and NPD go hand in hand. If you do not want to believe everything she says, she has no interest in you. Everything that I'm saying in this video is 100% truth and you can believe what you want. So the first one is you are tired all the time. No, I wouldn't say that I'm tired all the time. I do feel like sluggish, but high. My vitamin D is like almost in the negatives. You know, we never discuss her weight, but it is amazing to me the sense of delusion that has to go on to not even acknowledge that being 400 or so pounds overweight is not a contributing factor to being tired and sluggish. You stalk all of your exes on all social media platforms. No, I have no reason to stalk all my exes when I'm happy with my current fiance. Woo! We know people with NPD tendencies only have very superficial relationships. They also idealize perfect life, love, jobs, whatever. This engagement was not because she loved Becky. It was to let us know how desirable she was. You think you know better than professionals. No, I just know that every said professional and different stages of their work says different things. A weight loss surgeon will say something different than a dietitian. A dietitian will say something different than a nutritionist. A nutritionist will say something different than a weight loss doctor. The list can go on. So it is hard to focus in and listen to one of them when they all say something different. So in other words, yes, I do know better and I have a deep understanding about what level they are at in their knowledge and careers. You want to create content, but all the hate holds you back. Yes, there's a lot of content I want to create, but I just feel very like I'm stuck in this little box and I'm trying to, you know, dig my way out. It's just really hard because I feel like people expect me to be a certain Amber Lynn because this is how I started my channel, but yet everyone changes their channel eventually. And I just feel like with the following that I have and the following that um, certain people have, I'm not gonna say anything. <laughs> if I'm not, or they're not changing their channel for ways that'll benefit them and their entertainment, then people get upset about it. There is such a disconnect between what she perceives herself and her channel as, and what we the viewers see. When she talks about how YouTubers are, I find it annoying. YouTubers and how they run their channels are as individual as snowflakes. You are incredibly emotionally strong. Love seeing your content. Thank you. And yes, I feel like I am very strong. And don't get me wrong. I break down. I'm mentally um, unstable a lot of the time. I cry. But I have some thick skin and it's because of my past and it's because of the hate I receive online. I used to hate the saying, what doesn't kill you makes you strong. I used to hate it, I hate it. But I finally get it. The more that you are punched and the more that you are slapped and kicked while you're down, for me, the easier it is for me to stand back up. It's like, I know that if I didn't experience what I've experienced in the past and if I didn't experience what I'm experiencing now, any little thing, like a drop of a hat, 
would literally make me feel crazy, but it's like, it takes a lot to make me feel crazy now. <laughs> I'll give her that, she has to have a thick skin. Most people would leave YouTube given the hate that she gets. That said, she is in full narc glory here. A question about her good character? Where she can expound on her pride and strength in the face of adversity? Well, that's perfect. I say crazy for the lack of a better word, but what I'm trying to say is like, long story short, all the BS that I've dealt with and am currently dealing with has made me a strong B-I-T-C-H. You put makeup on your knuckles to hide it. You know what? Let's put makeup on my knuckles. So people were saying I put concealer on my knuckles. So let me get some concealer. I never in my life would have ever thought of doing something like that. Is this good for you? So, um, do I use a makeup brush for this? I don't even know. Oh my God, I'm getting it all over. Hold on. Okay. What? Ooh, crusty. That's cr Y'all, that's crusty. I thought you guys came up with a really good idea, but I've realized it's not. Yes, I put makeup on my knuckles to hide it. <laughs> to hide what exactly? <laughs> my diabetes. We know our narc friends cannot tolerate criticism. This amazing display of condescension and superiority leads me to think that someone touched a nerve here. It's disproportionately defensive. So now we're going to have that the whole time. <laughs> That's unfortunate. You doctor shop. No, I just know when something's wrong and you're allowed to get a second opinion and you're allowed to get a third opinion. And if you have to, you're allowed to get a fourth opinion. Every single time that I have felt within my soul that something was wrong with my body, I've been right. Thing. They will often enlighten the doctor on what's wrong or insist on being the exception to the rule. There's a difference between getting a second opinion and finding a doctor to agree with you. Your I'm engaged video was so sad because you ain't actually happy. I seemed sad in that video. Mm -hmm. I'm very happy to be engaged to Becky and knowing one day she's going to be my wife. I, it makes me, uh, I get butterflies in my stomach. I feel like I'm going to cry. I get super emotional. This warm, fuzzy feeling just like elopes my whole body. I'm sorry that I portray that differently online. If only you guys would have been there when she proposed, you guys. I cried and I laughed because how she did it was so cute and so Becky and I am very happy to be getting married to her and I hate that people think otherwise. A deep need for admiration and a preoccupation with the fantasy of ideal love are traits of a narcissist. They also want to be the envy of others. Also, this didn't age well. Disrespectful towards the viewers who care about you. Highly unfair towards them. I disagree. I'm disrespectful to the people who are disrespectful to me. And if you feel like I'm being disrespectful towards you when you've done nothing but support me, that means I think that you are taking what I'm saying when you shouldn't be. People who should be listening to my disrespectful words and my bitchiness is the people who have been rude to me and lie about me, spread rumors, who fat shame, those are the people I'm disrespectful to. But the people who are kind, patient, understanding, supporters, I don't ever mean any harm towards you guys, ever, because I appreciate you guys so much. Check your tickets, folks. We have hit a trifecta of narcissism. Arrogance, a need for excessive admiration, and a belief that she is special and can only be understood by special people. You try to one-up Dana and Destiny because you're jealous of them. I am not jealous of them. I have no reason to be jealous of them. Like, absolutely no reason. And I've never felt like I was ever trying to one-up Dana. I think that people just try to create this drama because it's entertaining. In truth, I do not recall seeing her exhibit this on camera, although envying others and wanting to be the envy of others is a very common trait of people with NPD. I always suspected that her pushing Becky to propose 
was caused by Destiny and Dana's engagement. But that is pure supposition on my part. You have OCD, yes. And yes, I was diagnosed. Calm down. Actually, the things I do because of my OCD kind of gets under Becky's skin. Okay, wait, I worded that wrong. It doesn't get under Becky's skin, but we've definitely had talks where some of the things that I do doesn't frustrate her, but it, it doesn't annoy her. It like, it's just hard for her to deal with. And my OCD tendencies that I do have, I do not talk about them on YouTube. She is so conflicted here. She wants to have bad OCD to be special and unique. She also wants to keep up the perception of her perfect relationship where they never fight or struggle. Becky would never find her annoying. You don't actually enjoy filming videos. You just do it because it's easy money. No, I enjoy YouTube. I always have. She has often used the word job or obligation. In one old video, she referred to vlogging as a chore. She also gets paid to literally talk about herself for hours. I think she enjoys YouTube on her terms. When anything shakes her version of reality, it's a drudge. You would like me to paint or draw a cute picture of you and Becky celebrating engagement. Oh my god, yes! Anyone can draw us. I honestly love fan art so much. She has such a lack of empathy for her fans. She mentioned again recently about getting cards and letters, ramen noodles and drawings. I have never once heard her say thank you, shout someone out, or even show the gifts. You are shy in public at first, yes. And then once you get to know the real me, I'm, I'm, I'm different. I'm weird and I love it. She's very special and unique. Your love language is gift giving. It is. When it comes to like the love that I put out, I just want to shower people with gifts and money and help people. And ugh. sometimes I feel like it's overkill for sure. But when it comes to love language of receiving love, I honestly do do know what I am. I just can't figure it out. In my opinion, she's a gift giver because of the charge that she gets from it. The thanks, the praise. It's also a pretty classic love bombing technique. So that was the last one. I feel like I was a little woo in this video, but it's like sometimes you gotta be a little woo for people to listen to you. Classic NPD trait using catastrophic language or exaggerating things to make sure you are heard and stand out. Plus I'm just like in a good mood and when I'm in a good mood, like I get a little, woo! Well, there you have it, a look back at Amber from just maybe about six months ago. Thank you so much for watching. Click like if you like, maybe subscribe, but for sure leave a comment. We've got the best comment section on YouTube and it gets better all the time. I don't love you, I'm not Amber, I don't know you, but I really appreciate you and your time. Now go, be kind, hasta luego.